What's up, Lucci gang? How y'all doing? How y'all doing, man? Welcome back to the channel. You watching Luciano TV. I am Lucky Lou. I'm getting ready to head out of town. I got to go to uh, El Paso, Texas tomorrow and uh, perform at a church over there called uh, the Enhanced Christian Center. So, yeah, y'all come check me out if y'all in the El Paso area. And then... Uh, I'll be in Art Artesia, New Mexico, I believe, and uh, Carlsbad, New Mexico, uh, this weekend. It's Memorial weekend, man. Y'all be careful out there, man. Don't be drinking and driving. Y'all watch out, man. You know what I'm saying? It's a dangerous world we live in, in dangerous times. I wanted to come on here real quick and tell y'all, a lot of people be asking me, so you a Christian rapper now? They can't believe it. They want to come see it for themselves. Or they want to know, well, how did I become a Christian? Why did I become a Christian rapper? Let me tell you how this happened. Man. So I started I started going to church, right? I started, well, really, I started working on myself first. I was running every morning. I was praying every morning. I told myself I was going to give myself one year to work on myself, really. To do, like, some personal development, taking self-inventory, and really trying to be self-disciplined and work on myself to really better my finances is how it started i was like i want to you know i want to be successful i want to take this year and really do something different so i wanted to stop drinking i wanted to stop smoking i wanted to stop uh, just wasting time i wanted to be uh, more disciplined with my time and do something productive every day so that's how it started so i said i'm gonna work on myself and i believe if you work on your i, I didn't notice at the time but it's true if you work on yourself wholeheartedly you do your work and something you're dedicated to something every day and you're self-disciplined about it and you got a goal and you're striving for that goal people will pop up in your life unknown friends will come into your life that you didn't expect and you know people that don't belong in your life and people that aren't on the same wavelength as you anymore they're not on the same vibe as you will be taken out of your life and people that are on that same wavelength will be put into your life. And that's what I've learned. Uh, it started at the beginning of last year, 2020. I started running every morning. I started, I was praying on my knees every morning, praying to God, talking to God every morning, building a relationship with God every morning. I go outside and run. I wasn't drinking. I wasn't smoking. I was uh, eating hell. I was being healthy. I was exercising. I was reading every day, reading every day. And I was doing this every single day, Monday through Sunday, every day. And after about a month and a half of that, a pastor, shout out to Pastor Juan, he reached out to me. He saw one of my motivational videos and uh, he didn't reach out to me right when he saw the video. He saw the video and went on about his day. He saw it on Instagram and then he went on about his day. And then he said a, a few days later, he was praying in the morning and while he was praying, that video that he had saw a few days ago popped up in his head. And so he said he felt like God was telling him that he needed to reach out to me. And he didn't know why or what for, or mind you, I had never, I had been to his church one time, probably like six months prior to this. This is in February. And so the summer before that, I had went to his church one time cause I was at the barbershop getting a haircut one day me and Kelly had been arguing and I left the house when he got a haircut. I was at the barbershop and this man walked into the barbershop and walked straight up to me where I was sitting down getting my haircut. Shout out to Carrie. His name is Carrie. I know him now because we go to the same church together now. But at the time, I didn't know him and he didn't know me. And he walked inside the barbershop and said, hey, man, I was driving by and I just wanted to come give you this flyer. And he gave me a flyer and it was for Get Rap Church. It was for the church that Pastor Juan is the pastor at. And he gave me the flyer and he was like, man, I, I just want to pray for you. And I was like, man, go ahead, man. I need all the prayer I can get right now. Come on. I ain't going to turn down no prayers. And so he put his hands on me and he prayed for me. And then he paid for everybody's haircut in there and walked out. And then when he left, I had the flyer in my hand. And I came home and I told Kelly and I was like, let's go check out that church. And we went to the church on Sunday. And then that was that. And we didn't, we just went that one time and we never went back. So fast forward. That was like in the summer of 2019. So now this is February of 2020. I've been working on myself. I've been, you know, doing my push-ups every morning and going to go run, reading, and praying every morning. And next thing you know, Pastor Juan hits me up on Instagram and he's like, "Hey man, uh, 
uh, I forgot what he told me, but something to on the lines of, I want to see if we can uh, meet up one day for lunch and chop it up about, uh, you know, just, I want to, I want to holler at you about something. And I was like, okay. So I thought that he was going to come at me with like, he wanted me to do something for his church or wanted me to come perform or, you know what I'm saying? So I didn't know what he wanted, but, it, and, and really he didn't know what he was reaching out to me for. He just knew that, you know, God was telling him that he needed to talk to me. So we went to go eat at P.F. Chang's, him and his wife and me and Kelly. And uh, he was telling me his story. I was telling him my story and where I was at, what I was doing with my life, working on myself. It, this was right around the time I dropped the Motivation album. And uh, so he was like, man, I want to do discipleship with you. And uh, it's basically like, you know, take you under my wing and, and help you with your walk with Christ. You're praying every day, but you're not really in your word and you're not really, you know, belonging. You don't belong to a church community and you're not really, you know, let me help you and, and you know, show you the ropes on, on this Christian walk. So I said, okay, bet. And he's like, just give me one year. Let me, give me one year to, to help you and, you know, see, let's see what, what it does. Let's see what happens. He's like, I don't know what God has planned for you or what, what, what his purpose is for you but i feel like there's a calling on your life it pardon me real quick let me i'm at the atm hold on gotta make these deposits man um he said i'm sort of like a, a bondsman and god is like the judge and i'm telling you hey the judge want to holler at you and, you know, whatever you do with it is between you and God. But I did my part. That's what he told me. So I said, all right. And I was like, man, I wonder, you know, what's going on? I was like, I was like, um, I thought in my mind, I was like, okay, this has to do with me. I've been praying every morning. I've been exercising, you know what I'm saying? Maybe this is God reaching, you know, God wants me to, you know, get really get closer to him. And in my mind, I thought that I was already a Christian. I was like, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm praying every day, but I was still, I wasn't drinking, I wasn't smoking, I wasn't cheating on my wife. You know what I'm saying? But I was still making uh, the music. I didn't realize, I didn't even see it as something that was wrong. What I was doing, I was making that same type of music. I was doing the, even though I was doing like more of a motivation type thing, trying to inspire people to do the right thing. When people would call me for a verse and they on a song talking about pimping or trapping or hustling or whatever they talk about, I would jump on the song and they would pay me. And that's how I would make my money. So I didn't see nothing wrong with that. I, that didn't even cross my mind that, you know, I thought that I was, you know, a Christian already. I was already praying. I wasn't drinking or smoking, you know what I'm saying? But I was still making that music. So... Uh, one day I was at Pastor Juan's office and he called me up there and we're, we're meeting, we're chopping it up, you know, we're just talking. And he said, uh, so, uh, you know, you're doing your thing. I see you drop that motivation album and everything, you know, you're, you're doing well. He said, but what's stopping you from saying you're a full fledged born again Christian? And I was like, man, I don't know. I was like, uh, I, I mean, I, in my mind, I, th I thought I was already. I was like, I mean, I really ain't doing nothing wrong. I was like, I mean, the only thing I could, and then it popped in my head. I was like, that was the music. And I was like, the only thing that I'm probably still doing is, you know, I'm, I'm rapping for the streets still. I'm not, you know, I'm not doing it to glorify God. I'm, I'm rapping, you know, for the world. And he was like, well, when you let that go, that's when God's really going to bless you and show favor in your life and really use you. And, and that's what you've been called to do. And he's really going to use everything that you've been through and take everything that the enemy meant for bad. He's going to take it and use it for good and for his glory and to help people that have been through what you've been through. And then I was like, man, that sound, sounds pretty hard. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I was like, because I didn't want, I thought I couldn't let go of that music. I was like, man, that's all. I, only way I know how to get paid. The only way, only thing that I've ever done since I've been a grown up, since my teenage years, I've, that's all I've done was rap. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't think that I'd ever be able to stop rapping, especially, you know, especially not be a Christian rapper. And then he was like, uh, I want you to come by the office and I want you to meet some of my friends that are in town. They're from, they're, they're from out of town, but they're in town because we're going to, they're going to be on my podcast. 
And I was like, okay, his, he was like, his name's Brian T. He's a Christian rapper. And, uh, you know, he has a, a, a group, a ministry called Kingdom Music. So I was like, all right, cool. So I came over there and I met them. And I met him. I met uh, Antoine, Young Bro, uh, Aaron. I met all of them that, that same day. And then uh, later that day or the next day, they were having a concert uh, uh, at the church. And it was a, a, a web concert, like a live streaming concert. So no one was really there in the crowd. It was all on the internet. But they were going to be performing at the church. So he said, come by the church and check us out. So I said, all right, cool. So I met them. They were all cool and everything. I went the next day and saw them perform. And it was like they did a, a live performance of all their music in front of me. And it was just me and Kelly and the kids. And we were sitting there watching them. And then after I heard the music... And I and I had met them and I saw that they weren't like like squares or nerdy or you know what I'm saying? I thought Christian rappers, you know, those are like the nerdy kids or something. You know what I'm saying? And, and when I met them, I, they, you know, they had they looked like me. They, you know, got J's on and chains and you know, they weren't like they looked normal, you know what I'm saying? And they and then they could rap. They weren't like they weren't sorry, they they could rap. So I was like, oh, okay. And then it hit me. I was like, this is what God wanted. Uh, this is what Pastor Juan was supposed to do. He was supposed to, like, basically, he was the plug. You know what I'm saying? He was the plug to introduce me to these Christian rappers and introduce me to this new lane. You know what I'm saying? So I believe that's what happened. And then I started, I said, one, like, not too long ago, not too much long after that, someone called me, a rapper called me. And he was like, yo, I need you to jump on this track for me. You know, I'm going to send you the beat. And I'm sending you the money. And I was, and I just told him, I was like, man, I'm rapping for the Lord. Now I'm walking with God. And I ain't, you know, I'm not doing no more features. I'm only, you know, unless we talk about God and we rapping about giving glory to God. That's the only way I'm going to do the feature. I'm not, you know. And he was like, oh, man, it's all good. I respect that. You know what I'm saying? And then after that, you know, I had after I told him that, the next rapper told it, it seemed like, I felt like he called someone else just to see what I was going to say. Because after that, rappers started calling me a lot and started trying to see if I was going to tell them no. And I just was kept turning them down, left and right, left and right, turning them down. And I didn't have no Christian rappers calling me yet to, to do no verses. So really, I was turning down the money and just having faith that God was going to make a way. And I still didn't know if my fan base was going to rock with me if I started rapping about God. You know, I was just really walking in faith and having faith that God was going to make a way and use me and fast forward it's about you know a year later from then it's a little over a year later and now I done dropped a Christian mixtape a Christian album I'm going on the road tomorrow I got three shows this weekend I'm going places that I normally wouldn't go if I was still you know rapping like how I was rapping before they just booked me in California man I don't remember the last time I was booked in California they just booked me to come to Oxnard. I'll be in Oxnard, California on July 18th. I'm in El Paso tomorrow and two cities in New Mexico this weekend. So, you know, God really got me moving around out here, man. But I had to take that leap of faith and really show God that I was for real with it. And he got me moving, man. I got a call. South Park Mexican called me uh, two days ago. He called me. Uh, no, when was it? It was. Uh, he called me Friday, last Friday. It was a few days ago. Today's Thursday. He called me on Friday. Him and his brother Tootie called me on Three Way. And they were telling me they're putting a tour together. And, you know, if they wanted me to be a part of it. And they're like, we already know that you know what you're doing now, what you, how you're moving. But we want you to come be a part of it. And I just, you know, I had to break it down to them and tell them what it was like. You know, not only if I don't want to confuse the fans and confuse the people out there and, and you know, let them know that I'm for real with what I'm saying. I don't, I don't want to be in that environment. I can't put myself in that environment where there's people drinking and smoking weed, everybody's smoking weed and, and everybody's drunk and turning up and girls around. I can't put myself in that type of environment, man. You know what I'm saying? I I let I prayed to God to make a way for me to be able to support my family without having to be in that type of environment. So why would I turn around and go back to that type of environment? So that's why I told them, you know what I'm saying? And they respected what I said and it is what it is. I told them I loved them. I loved everything they did for me and my, you know, helped me, you know, in, in my early young years and I, I appreciate everything and I still got love for them. 
but you know i just can't put myself in that type of environment you know and and he, and and he did tell me that you know those those dope house fans are the type of people that i need to be ministering to but at the same time you can't minister to someone who's drunk and high you got to catch them when they're sober so they could really open their heart and really understand what you're trying to tell them because you know when they drunk and high they, the bible say when you try to preach to a drunk person they gonna mock you you know what i'm saying so that ain't that's not the right environment the right time to be trying to minister to somebody you know but there will be a time and place and i feel like god does want to put me in those dark places so i really can shine because you know, you can only shine so much when you're around other Christians. When you're around other light, when you're around nothing but light, it's hard. You can't really shine the way God wants you to. God got to put you in those dark places so that you really can shine the way you're supposed to. And I feel like there'll be a time for that, too. But right now, I'm just, you know, I'm just trusting God's process, man. But, yeah, that's the story, man. That's how I started rapping for the Lord, man. In Jesus' name, Christian album available now everywhere. Oh, matter of fact, we got another one. Me and my boy Flax about to drop an EP tomorrow. It's called Breaking Chains. Yeah, so y'all stay tuned for that, man. It's coming out tomorrow. Appreciate y'all for watching. Facts. 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 I've been to hell and back. Remember my plug was mailing me packs. Rap it in coffee, can't smell through the rap. Haters would look at me jealous and mad. I was just running straight after the bag. When I would fall, the devil would laugh. I had enough of that living, I'm glad. I'm on a new level and never look back. Keeping my foot on the enemy neck. Made in the image of God and I'm blessed. Keeping the spirit with me in my chest. I got so tired of trying to impress. Hiding behind all these diamonds and clothes. Putting that powder all up in my nose. Popping them bottles while rocking them shows. When it was over, where'd everyone go? It was just me and my demons around. I had a problem with beating them down. God, where you at? Cause I'm needing you now. Show me your way, I'm too deep in it now. Hey, reconditioned in restoration. I'm prayed up with no hesitation. God first, the only way I made it through them dark days. The devil is round the corner. I was a lonely stoner. Trapping up out of the crib. I did not care if I died or I lived. Man, I've been to hell and back. I've been to hell and back.